Okay, so in the last video, we just added three vectors, vectors A, B, and C, through the method of components. We wrote the components in a component table. I resolved all of the X components for A, B, and C, and all of the Y components for A, B, and C. We added all of them up, and now we have a new resultant in the X and in the Y. But now what I have to do is I have to rebuild this into a final vector so I can get the final magnitude angle and reference of my resultant vector. Okay, so the question is this, how do you find your resultant vector now? Now this is a really, really important part of vectors, so pay attention because people screw this up in a big way. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when you have your final x and your y is you need to draw a new x and a y coordinate system okay it's the first thing you do okay so before you do anything else you define your new x and your y and I'm gonna draw these out now I'm not necessarily gonna draw them to scale because we got 92 in the y which would throw me all the way up here and the x was only 6 but I'm just gonna show you this for illustrative purposes just to keep that in mind that this y component is really huge it's, it's way up there okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you my y-axis here and my x-axis here. Okay, so I have to define those positive and positive like this. It's the first thing we do. So I know that I'm going to have an x component and a y component, but the question is this. And this is really important. How do you draw those? How do you draw those? Okay, because there's different ways you can draw that. I could draw my x like this and my y like this, right? Okay, that's one way. Or I could draw my y first and then my x like this, right? Okay, and in this ca each case that, that I do that, I'm going to get a triangle. For example, if I drew it like this, right, I would have a triangle like that. Is that the one I want? Is that the triangle I want? Nope, it's not. Okay. What's the other thing I could do? Well, I could draw a triangle like this, right? Is that the triangle I want? Is that the triangle I want like that? No, it is not. Okay. What's the one we want to do? This is the, so this is the most important part of this, so pay attention. When you're drawing your components, okay, what you do is you draw your x component first and then your y component, okay? So if you're drawing this on your page, which I'm going to draw this for you. I'm going to draw this with you here. You put your pencil on the page like this, okay? And you start here at the center, at the origin, and you draw straight across like this, and you don't let your pencil leave the page. And then you draw, so you draw your X, and then you draw your Y, and you do not let your pencil leave the page, okay? So you do your X, and then you do your Y. That's really important to go in that order, because if you don't go in that order, it's going to be wrong, okay? So again, you're going to do your X, then your Y, and you're going to trace it in that order. When we do that, what you're going to get is you're going to get your new magnitude running right along here, right? This is going to be your triangle like this, right? And that's what you want, right? You want your triangle to run in that basic direction, right? So you're going to get your magnitude running along here. So when I draw my magnitude here, for this new vector, the resultant vector, it's going to look like that. So I did my x, my y, and now I have my resultant here. Okay, so that's really, really important. Okay, so if you don't get that order correct, the whole thing's going to be screwed up. Okay, so let's talk about this. Well, we know we want our reference angle theta to be to the horizontal right there, right? And I know that I have some magnitude here. I don't know what that is yet, right? I don't know what that is. But I do know what the x component is, right? Like this, right? What is my x component? Well, we know from up here that it's going to be positive 6.25. And I do know my y component, which I made a little bit, a lot shorter than it really was, right? It was 92 positive 
Okay, so that was the very first step to determine this resultant vector. But I know that if I fi to find my true resultant, right, what do I need to have? I need to have my magnitude, right? I need to have my angle. I need to have my reference. Do we have any of those yet? Take a look at this triangle. Do, do, we, do you see any of those yet? We don't have anything yet, right? We don't have a magnitude. We don't have an angle. We, don't, we, we might have a reference, actually. We do have that. We know it's going to be above the positive x-axis. But we don't really have the magnitude or the angle yet. So we need to go out and find that. So the, the hardest part of this was setting up that problem so that we could find the magnitude and the angle and the reference. So now that it's set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this, I'm going to move, not this, I'm going to move this down below it. So in the end, we're just going to write the answer down here for our final magnitude, angle, and reference. So the question is now, how do you find the magnitude? Let's go ahead and find it. So the magnitude, R, with these absolute value signs, is going to be found using Pythagorean's theorem. Pythagorean's theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? In this case, a is going to be the x component, so r of x squared, right? Plus r of y squared. And I'm going to take the square root of that because I just want to find the magnitude of r like this, okay? So the next step we're going to do is we're just going to say the magnitude of r equals what? Equals the square root of, what's the x component? 6.25 squared plus what? 92.59 nine squared. That square root goes over all of it. And now we're simply going to solve for the magnitude of that. So when I go ahead and solve that, I'm going to get the absolute value or the magnitude of r, that hypotenuse, is going to equal 92.8 newtons. Okay. And so that's what this value is going to be right here. This value right here, the hypotenuse of that is 92.8 newtons. Okay, so I'm getting one step closer, right? That was my first step. I had to find the magnitude first, right? What's my next step down here? Well, my next step is I need to find out what is that reference angle, right? I'm going to move this a little bit out of the way here. Just a little bit over, just so we get some more space. I need to find the angle next, right? I need to find this theta. So again, that first step, what we did was, just to clarify again, we found the magnitude. Didn't label it before I did it. We found the magnitude of that. Now my next step that I'm going to do down here, I'm going to put this down here, step two, is I'm going to find the angle. Now there's many ways you can do this, okay? You have all the sides of the triangle, right? So you have all of the sides of this triangle and you can use any trig function you want. You could have used sine, you could have used cosine, you can use tangent. The default for the angle is tangent. So the default is tangent, okay? So the tangent, if you recall, is going to be opposite over adjacent. So to find theta, we're going to take the inverse tangent. So theta okay, is going to equal the inverse tangent okay, of the y over the x value, okay, the y over the x. So what's the y value here? Let me give myself some more space. The y value here is simply going to be 92. 
and the x value is going to be 6.25 so I need to continue that down here so I'm going to say theta is the inverse tangent of that so when I go ahead and calculate that, I'm going to get a really large angle, which is 86, let's say 0.1 degrees. And the reason that angle is so large is because, remember, my y value is actually really high, right? It's 92, but I didn't, I didn't write it as such. So that's my angle, okay? And so what's my reference here? Well, we know the reference is going to be where? it's going to be above the positive x-axis. So we're going to say above the positive x-axis. So now let's put all of this together now, okay? So to find the new resultant vector, I need a magnitude an angle and a reference. What's my magnitude? Let's write it all out. Let's get the final word here. 92.8 newtons. My angle is 86.1 degrees. And where is my reference point? Above the positive x-axis. And so now we've gone through the whole process of adding up vectors. If we go back to the beginning here, I took vectors. I took three different vectors. I, I want to add them up, and I want to find that new resultant, right? I took them. I broke them down into their x components. I broke them down into their y components. I added up all of the x's. I added up all of the y's. Okay, once I have that, I have my new x and my y components for the resultant vector, but that's not what we were looking for. We were looking for the new resultant in terms of the magnitude angle and the reference. So I had to go down here. I drew out the components. Just to review, we did the x first, then we did the y, okay? Then I drew my magnitude, but we didn't even have anything at that point, right? We had to actually find the magnitude in terms of calculating the actual value. To do that, I did Pythagorean theorem, which is the square root of r of x squared plus r of y squared. And we ended up getting 92.8 for that magnitude. The angle, the default in physics, we use tangent. Okay, I could have used sine, cosine, whatever I wanted, tangent, but tangent is the default, so let's always use that. Theta is the inverse tangent of the y over the x, so the y over the x. So theta was 86.1, and then I needed to find my reference here, which was what? My reference was above the positive x-axis, right? So then I needed to put them all together here, right? So once I was able to put them all together, I knew what my final vector was here. It was 92.8, 92.8 90, newtons, 86.1 degrees above the positive x-axis and now I have found my resultant vector by adding up vectors a, b, and c.